Okay, so what do I want to happen when this thing gets hit? Well, I probably want to add one to my score. So left score. Ha, huh, I just realized something. I never actually set the count text. I should do that here. Okay, carrying on. Uh, this is the thing that starts up when we very first start. I should probably set whatever my text count is to my left score. Anyway. So once I have a collision, I need to add one to my score. Left score plus one. There's a shorter way to do this where you just say plus equals one, but this will work just fine. Once I add one to my score, I need to set my text box. So I'm just going to say set count text again. Hey, that was useful. Let's see. Then I need to jump the ball back to its starting position. So every object has something called a transform, which is it takes the object and tells it where its x, y, and z positions are. We need to take the ball and jump it back to its starting position. I don't have that information yet, so I need my ball object saved when I first start off. So I think that I'm going to make that a attached ball variable. I'm going to save this real quick and go back into Unity. So if I go look at this wall now, I have these variables here that are attached. I haven't set which text field I'm talking about. Eventually, I'm going to have two text fields. So I need to make sure that this script knows that it's talking about this left scored text field. So in Unity, the way you attach things is by dragging them into those places. So this is going to get dragged into here. The ball object I'm going to be talking about, obviously, is this one. So I'm going to click and drag this guy to the ball object here. Make sure you don't click first, because that will make the inspector change. Make sure you click on the wall. And then when you click on something else, immediately start dragging it. Don't just click. Remember, you can always do Control Z to undo anything or edit undo. All right, so now my script knows that the text field I'm going to be sending things to is this guy. And the ball object I'm going to be talking about is this guy. So now I can talk about those directly in my script, which is kind of handy. So if I go back into Visual Studio, so now the attached ball, I want to jump back to its starting position. This object here, attached ball, has something called a transform. And then if I want to set a particular thing inside of that, I can go get it. I'm going to be looking at the position in space. So a position is basically an x, a y, and a z value. I can change this by setting it to be a new vector 3, which is an x, y, and z value, basically. It's three points contained in one object. So I want to set this to be about 2, well, right about here. So maybe somewhere between maybe negative 2 or so from this x position here. So let's try that. Negative 2. This is a floating point number. So I say minus 2, and then I say f to say, yes, this is a floating point number. And then I'm just going to use whatever the y position was before. I'm just going to jump the ball back to that same y position. So the way I can do that is I can go get the ball. I can either say attach ball, or I can get it from this collision event. To get the collision event, I say go get the object that was attached to that collision. And then, much like this over here, I can get its transform and position. And then, inside of a position, it has an x, a y, and a z. So I'm just going to go grab its y. Transform is not a word. Transform is a word. There we go. Then I need to go get the z position. Call dot game object dot transform dot position dot z. Semicolon at the end. Notice there's a couple ways I could get at the same object. I could have also said attach ball here. And I could have said here, call.gameObject, and not had to worry about attaching the ball. If you had multiple ball objects, for whatever reason you wanted multi-ball pong, you could have 
just this collision event deal with all of those instead of trying to attach one particular ball to an object. All right, so let's try this in Unity. Whoa, did you see it jumped all the way back to the center line? Hey, and it's adding too. Well, it would be nice if we could pause it instead of it immediately jumping back and moving. So I wonder if there's any way that we could basically create a delay before it actually starts moving again, because otherwise it seems kind of crazy unfair. So let's see. What we need to do is we need to basically pause the velocity on this thing, jump it back to its starting position, and then start the ball moving again when we have a, basically when a timer goes off. OK, how do we do that? Unity create delay. OK, what have we got? Scripting for waiting for seconds. So this one looks like wait for seconds. It has this start coroutine. And then whatever this method is, it does stuff inside of here. It's got a wait for seconds command. OK, interesting. How do I set a small delay? This is the same execute after time and use a start coroutine. All right, so this looks like the same thing either way. So it looks like what we do is we create another method, and then we call that method in this start coroutine. And then we use this wait for seconds command in the middle of it. All right. Well, if we go look at our code for the ball object, so the ball object has this script called ball, cleverly named. So we have this starting thing, we have this on collision enter 2D, and we have this hit factor. Now, it would be nice if we could take this automatic uh, starting thing where it just goes to the right and make this a random direction instead. Because it seems like what we want to do is we want to stop it, stop the ball object, and then have it pick some new random direction so that it's not always going to the right. It seems like it's not fair that the direction that it always picks is a particular one. What happens if the left player wants to be the one that hits it first? So instead of doing this, I'm actually going to create a new method which is going to randomize the direction. This is something I'm going to want to call after I start the ball moving again after it pauses as well. So I think I'm going to create something called new random direction. I'm going to comment this out for now. And I'm going to make it down here. 